Hello everybody, how's it going? So this past weekend I finally increased my calories and uh, I began lean bulking. Finally, oh yeah. So uh, from now on, over the next few weeks or months, most of the content I'm going to produce will be focused on muscle growth. And uh, one of the first things that I wanted to address is calorie cycling. If you're not familiar with the term, calorie cycling means alternating between days where you eat a surplus of calories with days where you eat at maintenance or maybe in a deficit. So it basically means that you eat more on some days than other days. In this video I'll explain how uh, calorie cycling can help you minimize fat gain when lean bulking. Then uh, I'll show you how you can set up your diet with calorie cycling based on your training program. And finally at the end of the video I'll give you my opinion on calorie cycling and um, whether or not you should use it. Alright, here we go. Let's start with some basics first. So uh, how successful your lean bulk is comes down to three things. Number one, calories in versus calories out. Number two, the macros those calories come from. And number three, calorie partitioning or uh, nutrient partitioning. Calories in versus calories out is of course the most important. That's why it's number one. If you're not eating a slight surplus of calories, you can't gain weight and you can't maximize muscle growth. You can probably still gain some muscle if you're eating at maintenance, but it takes forever. I don't recommend it. On the other hand, if you eat a lot more food than you need, no matter what fancy nutrition strategies you use, you will gain fat. You are in a, a high surplus of calories. So the first rule of lean bulking is eat the maximum amount of nutrients your body can use for muscle growth, but don't go over that limit. Because all calories above that limit will go to fat stores. When the calories are set properly, the next thing you need to worry about is uh, macros. Of course, the macros those calories come from highly influence body composition, although the weight change may be the same. So the second rule of lean bulking is get enough protein to support muscle growth and uh, get a good balance of fats and carbs to support training performance and health. And of course, you would, make, um, you would get the best results if you put an emphasis on carbs because carbs support training performance. Now, when you got all that in place, there is still one more thing you need to gain muscle. Which is training. The stimulus for muscle growth. If you have a perfect lean bulking plan in terms of calories, in terms of macros, but you don't train, you just get fat. But on the other hand, if you have the same diet plan, but you train, you gain muscle. What's the difference? Answer, nutrient partitioning or calorie partitioning. Training is the best nutrient partitioner we have. When we stimulate the muscle fibers to grow, they require a lot of uh, amino acids for protein synthesis, which is a very costly metabolic process. That's why we need a surplus of calories. A good amount of energy from food will be used to fuel protein synthesis. In addition to that, training increases insulin sensitivity in muscle tissue which means that a good portion of the carbs you eat will go in muscle stores to replenish the glycogen instead of going to fat stores. So that is again a favorable partition of nutrients. So the third rule of lean bulking is train. And of course you need to make progress in your training so you provide the stimulus for muscle growth and you must eat enough food to allow that adaptation to happen. That's pretty much it that would be lean bulking in a nutshell. So uh, where does calorie cycling fit in all of this? Well by cycling calories we may be able to slightly improve nutrient partitioning because uh, we know that protein synthesis starts to climb around 3 to 4 hours after training then it reaches its peak around the 24 hour mark then it steadily goes down until it reaches baseline levels 36 to 48 hours after training. We also know that training uh, depletes muscle glycogen and uh, the carbs we eat after training, even if it's a high surplus of calories, a high surplus of carbs, 
won't be turned into body fat until the glycogen stores are completely replenished. This means that if we place most of our caloric surplus around training, we will be providing most of our nutrients at a time when they will most likely be used for recovery and growth. And by doing this, we leave a much uh, smaller part of our surplus available for fat gain. On a rest day when uh, protein synthesis starts to calm down or maybe has even reached baseline levels, we will be eating less food because uh, muscle growth won't happen at that time. And uh, by doing this, we minimize fat gain. We do not leave a surplus of calories available for fat gain. This is the basic premise behind uh, calorie cycling. You provide most of the nutrients at a time when nutrient partitioning is best. Now, a good question to ask is uh, how much of a difference does this make? Based on my observations, you can gain maybe 10 to 20% less fat by doing this. Uh, muscle growth being more or less the same. And uh, I think the reason we can't completely prevent fat gain uh, when bulking by cycling calories is because the human metabolism doesn't work on a 24 hour cycle like we tend to assume. If you have a day of deficit after a day of surplus, you won't lose fat on that day of deficit. Why? Because uh, the energy from the day before is still in your body. The nutrients are still being processed. And uh, if you go into a deficit after a surplus day, you are most likely at maintenance. So you will not be going in a deficit to tap into your body fat stores. What ultimately matters for your uh, body weight and uh, body composition is the average caloric intake over the course of a few days. If over the course of a few days you will be in a surplus of calories, you will be gaining weight, muscle and most likely fat uh, even if you cycle calories. But as I said, you probably can minimize fat gain by 10 to 20%, which is pretty good. So let's now move on to the practical stuff. How do you set up a calorie cycling plan? Well, let's talk about that next. Now, depending on how many training days you have in a week, and also depending on your training experience, the ideal calorie cycling protocol for you changes. So um, let me show you how. Here are my recommendations. Cycling. In short, I think calorie cycling is great and uh, is definitely superior for lean bulking compared to a linear intake. Leaving nutrient partitioning aside, I think the main reason that people tend to gain less fat when uh, they uh, cycle calories on a bulk is because they are more strict with their numbers. So uh, when you have a goal every day, hitting a certain number of calories, you tend to be more adherent, more precise. When you have to eat the same uh, amount of food every day, a lot of guys get too relaxed and end up eating maybe 100, 200, 300 calories more than they have planned for the day. The better you hit your macros on a bulk, the leaner you will stay. It makes sense. So uh, I think if you had trouble in the past staying lean while bulking, then maybe if you cycle calories every day, you will stick to your numbers better. You will stick to your nutrition better and uh, you, will, you wouldn't have such a high caloric surplus. Here's the interesting thing though. In my opinion, for other people, this improved adherence that comes from cycling calories can actually be a huge drawback because it can make you focus on preventing fat gain more than you focus on gaining muscle. Remember that for muscle growth, Progressing in your training is much more important than your nutrition. So if you become so obsessed with your macros every day that you start to underestimate the importance of progressing in your training, then uh, you're in trouble. Calorie cycling in this case may do you more harm than good. 
What I've noticed is that uh, when we have a complicated diet plan that promises a lot of things, we tend to assume that will do everything for us. I mean, if you time those nutrients so perfectly with your training, you must be gaining muscle, right? Well, no. If your training, if your strength is not going up, you can cycle calories all you want. You will not gain muscle. That's the very reason I personally stopped calorie cycling. Because it made me focus more on minimizing fat gain than uh, on building muscle. And uh, I'll admit it, I'm a little obsessed with body fat. And uh, I, in the past, I spent months not gaining weight, not gaining strength, not gaining muscle. All of it because I was trying to minimize fat gain on a bulk. And uh, I think calorie cycling was a big part of it. Because I was achieving a goal every day, hitting my macros, and that gave me a feeling of accomplishment. So even if my training wasn't going anywhere, my weight wasn't going up, and I wasn't gaining muscle, after a few weeks, I could say, well, at least I didn't gain any fat. Now that's stupid. Since I stopped calorie cycling, that daily feeling of success was eliminated. What I had to do instead to get uh, that feeling of accomplishment was to make progress in the gym. So if two weeks went by and I wasn't gaining any strength and my weight wasn't moving, well, I didn't have anything to feel good about. I felt like a failure. So I said, shit, my training isn't going anywhere. I must change something. Now when I'm lean bulking, I'm basing my success only on the progress I make in the gym and not on minimizing fat gain. And I think that was a, a very important step for me. So my honest advice is uh, if your diet is shifting your focus away from your training when you're trying to build muscle, stop the diet. Make it simpler. Focus on making strength gains and focus on your weight steadily going up because that's the right attitude to have when you are trying to build muscle. Forget minimizing fat gain if your weight isn't going up at all. So that's it guys. Thanks so much for watching another long video. I do appreciate your time. So uh, if you have any questions, leave them below. Also, as always, any other type of feedback is welcomed. Like the video if you like the video and I'll be seeing you next time. Oh, and make sure you download my free ebooks.